Hi, I'm Sammy, and today we'll be going over Open Sesame. Open Sesame is a Mattel toy that I've hacked to open virtually any garage door which uses fixed codes in under 10 seconds using a new vulnerability I've discovered. Let's see it in action, then understand how it all works and how to protect against this. Before we go any further, while I've released all the details and source code, I've altered the code so that it won't actually work to prevent criminal abuse. Unfortunately, garages like this have been vulnerable to attack for over 30 years, yet are still being manufactured today and are irresponsibly being sold without consumers' knowledge of their inherent weaknesses. If you're not sure if you have a vulnerable garage, click this next video to learn how to protect yourself. Now onto the fun stuff. First let's take a look at the hardware. I'm using a Radica Girltech IME from Mattel. This is a now defunct tool for texting or, or toy for texting uh, that is no longer manufactured. Uh, you can probably pick them up on eBay. It's pretty cool because it, internally it has an RF chip called the, the uh, Texas Instruments CC1110, which is a sub gigahertz system on a chip. Uh, it can actually receive and transmit on a ton of frequencies under one gigahertz. Uh, a couple other hackers have found that while it lists a number of frequencies, that the range is actually much wider than it, uh, it states. Uh, it also is really cool because it has a couple other things. It has a built-in display, it has a, a backlight when you're hacking at night, keyboard, it's battery powered so fully portable, and uh, it actually has these pins on the back where we can actually flash it so we don't even need to really open it up. Um, Here's a, another one that you can see, which I've not modified, and you can see the test pads are clearly visible from the, the battery case. Also, I'm using Travis Goodspeed's GoodFet. Uh, we've used this in projects before. This is an awesome device for all sorts of hardware hacking. So this is what we use to reprogram the IME, and Travis has released a, a tool that makes it very easy. Uh, you just couple hook up a couple of wires. You'll also see I have an external antenna. This is an antenna that I actually added myself. Um, I removed the 900 megahertz quarter wave monopole antenna that was in here and uh, added this uh, uh, helix antenna for uh, around 300, tuned for around 300 or 315 megahertz. Now let's first understand the primary issue with these garages before even using my new attack. Uh, here we have a garage door opener, and if you notice, there's 12 dip switches on here, 12 binary dip switches. So, because it's binary, each one, each switch can be on or off. So, to see how many possible combos, or essentially uh, codes, that this can provide, that would be 2 to the 12th, which is equal to 4,096 possible codes. Um, that's it. Let's say you had a bank account and you set a password on it. Um, normally you'll use your character, your uh, alphabet, right? So you have your 26 lowercase characters, you have 26 uppercase characters, and let's, uh, let's make it alphanumeric, so we'll throw in your 10 digits, um, 0 through 9, and let's also use shift plus 0 through 9, so that's another, the, the special characters. So that's, uh, let's see, 72 possible characters you can use per character. Let's say you only had a two character password. That would be 72 squared, which is equal to 5,000, let's see, 184 possible passwords. So, a two character password on a website is more secure than most garages. Thanks, Obama. Now let's improve the attack. Uh, while our garage door has 12 bits, uh, let's look at something simpler. Let's look at a 3-bit code instead of 12 bits. Now, 3 bits is only going to produce uh, 8 possible codes, right? 2 to the 3, because they're binary, uh, would produce 8 codes. Now, if we have 8 codes and each code is 3 bits long, then we have 24 bits, as we see here. Uh, now, when sending when transmitting, we'll actually have to transmit not only the code, but when you transmit, it will always transmit a wait period after the code equal to the size of the code. So essentially, if it takes, let's say, a second to send 24 bits, it will take two seconds to send the, the 24 bits plus the wait period. 
Um, so we just multiply the bits times two and we get 48 bits. So assuming our garage accepted a three bit code, which it doesn't, it would be 48 bits. Now let's actually write out every code here um, in three bits. So we have zero, 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 blah, blah, blah. Here's basically all eight three bit codes um, in this first row. Now again, it's a, there's a wait period after it. So really, instead of 000, 000, 001, if I were brute forcing, I would have to send 000, wait, 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 001, wait, 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 so on and so forth. So we would double this line, the amount of time it would take. Now, what's interesting about this is if we remove these wait periods and we just send 000, 001, and let's assume for a moment our code is 001. So the 000 comes in and gets uh, rejected because that's not the code. And 001 does get accepted because that's our code. Then I found that my garage would open. So when I sent the correct 12-bit code, but I prepended an incorrect code before, it did open. So that means the wait times are actually unnecessary. Um, thanks to Mike Ryan for actually suggesting, uh, for suggesting to remove the wait times. So that actually reduces the amount of time it would take by 50%. So instead of sending these 48 bits, we only would have to send 24 bits to produce all 8-bit codes. Or I'm sorry, all 3-bit codes. However, this got me thinking, well, how does it know when the beginning of a code is coming in? You could say, well, you know, if it's a 12-bit garage, then it accepts 12 bits, uh, dumps those out, and then takes in the, accepts the next 12 bits. And that's kind of what we see here, down here. I've demonstrated... Um, what would happen is if we took the first three bits and we said, okay, that didn't work, so let's now take the next three bits. Okay, that didn't work, so now let's take the next three bits and so on and so forth. However, I thought that it's possible that the garage is using something called a bit shift register. And essentially in a bit shift register or a shift register, um, what we're doing is it takes the first three bits and it tests and it says, okay, that's not the correct code. So instead of throwing out the first three, it only throws out the first one bit and then pulls in the next bit. So here you'll see it tries 000 and fails. So then instead of trying 101, the next three bits, it actually only kills the first bit. So now it tries 001. So even though we've sent four bits, 0001, we've tested two three bit possibilities, 000 and 001. So we've tested six bits by only sending four bits. Now, if we take all of these three-bit codes, all eight of them, and overlap them, we get zero. We get this string right here, which is zero 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 one zero one 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 zero zero. It's only ten bits. However, it covers overlapping every single possible three-bit code. Um, this is called the De Bruijn sequence. Uh, De Bruijn, De Bruijn. I'm not sure. He's a mathematician who found an algorithm to create an overlapping sequence of numbers that produces every possible combination or permutation of uh, those numbers without actually having to essentially transmit or write them out twice. So with this, we can actually send 10 bits to the garage and produce all 24 bits of the code, which is awesome. Now, when you apply that to a 12-bit code, like in our garage, so instead of our 2 to the 12th, which is 4,096 codes, and again, that's actually 4,096 times 2, because, uh, let's see, what is that, 8,192 bits, because we need to add our wait time. So instead of sending, oh, in fact, that's 4,096 codes times 2. Each code is 12 bits long, so that's really 8,192 times 12, which is 9, I need to learn to write, 98,304 98, bits. So that's how many bits we need to send to produce every 12-bit code and wait period. But by using the De Bruijn sequence, we can actually we only have to send a total of 4,107 bits for the full De Bruijn sequence. 4,107 is 4.17%. It's about 4. Point, let's just call it 4.2%. 4.2% of 
the full key space. So we were able to produce every possible 12-bit code by overlapping them using the Debrugian sequence to send everything. Uh, this is incredible. And what this means is for a 12-bit code in a garage, it takes less than 10 seconds to send every possible combination. So you can stand outside of a garage, use the IME, hit the spacebar, every possible code will be sent overlapping and in under 10 seconds the garage will open without having any predetermined knowledge about the code. In the next video, I'll go much more in depth and show you how I sniff and interpret RF using RTLSDR, break down the signal, and more on the coding and hardware side as well. You can also get the source code and full write-up from my website at sammy.pl slash opensesame. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to get more sneak peek videos and first looks at the hacking tools I'm creating and research I'm doing, please join my mailing list. You can subscribe from my website at sammy.pl. Thanks. Bye.